हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल इन दिस वीडियो विल बी सींग अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग केस एंड वॉट वी लर्न फ्रॉम दिस केस as the case unfolds this is like a story where trainee surgeon there is another surgeon with good experience and there is expert surgeon and of course the patient who is involved so let's find out so the trainee surgeon has started the case the surgeon might have done around 20 25 cases under the supervision and uh, you can see that the ccc is very small so the trainer gave the opportunity to enlarge this capsular axis so trainee is trying to use the micro scissors and uh, not very comfortable with the position of the hand probably and uh, touches the capsular axis margin a bit too many times i think that is something which i would like to avoid because might create those micro nicks on the capsule excess age which might extend later so here with the 23 gauge uh, incision which was initially made probably the train is not very comfortable because it's not giving the enough space for maneuvering the micro capsule excess forceps now again another nick because i think the initial one was not proper so another nick was given but this time you can see the nick was little radial because this train event from the main incision and made the nick and now trying to lift up that tear yes there you go but because of this radial nick you can see the the direction of the tear is uh, towards the you know periphery that is towards zonule and again the train is bit struggling to get proper hold of that tear so this is uh, what uh, is uh, involved in training process and you can see suddenly here trainee will lose control over the forceps so these are the things which uh, trainee learns during the surgery having better control over the hand understanding how to see that jerk little jerk so probably trainee was not supporting hand and uh, that led to sudden jerky moment luckily the rexis didn't extend but it completed uh, rexis there and it was not still very big enough so decided to make another nick now the trainer has taken over because the surgeon has to use the left hand to enlarge the capsular axis again tear was made and then the axis was enlarged but again i think very tiny bit of enlargement there so now another nick will be taken again you can see that uh, the trainee tries to make nick twice so in such cases i think it's better to avoid taking multiple nicks avoid disturbing the cortex as well so now the trainee goes ahead with the hydro dissection and here already you can see the capsular block there the nucleus was trying to pop out but rather than pushing the nucleus back initially again hydro was done so that led to anti movement of the nucleus and as uh, the hydro dissection is complete and nucleus rotation is attempted just watch there there is there are two tears one and two which have gone into periphery so obviously now the trainee cannot proceed with the feco and uh, the surgeon with good experience consultant surgeon takes over this case and now the feco will be done with the extended or torn anterior capsular axis here so one has to use low parameters lower the bottle height a bit 
so you don't have sudden deepening of the anterior chamber which might uh, cause a tear of the anterior capsule to go towards the posterior capsule very carefully you can see the surgeon is avoiding excessive stretching of the nucleus excessive separation there and doing multiple chops and then removing the pieces so this is how a very good experienced consultant is tackling this case so whenever there is a open or discontinuous capsular axis where there are radial tears you have to make sure that you go with low flow FECO and here I have just speeded up the video four times so that to reduce the time of the surgical video but surgeon is taking all the care you can see that replenishment of the dispersive OVD as the surgeon is working little bit more anteriorly here now in these cases many things can happen like the tear might extend to the posterior capsule or there might be a vitreous prolapse so you have to be very watchful and very careful throughout the procedure and that is what the surgeon has done always do BSS visco exchange to maintain the anterior chamber now the surgeon is going to use bimanual to take care of the cortex you have to be careful about those torn capsular edges not to pull those very controlled I would say very well done surgery so that's a good learning from this case that how to do the fake emulsification procedure even if the anterior capsule is torn you have to take all those precautions as mentioned and as demonstrated again BSS and visco exchange making sure the AC remains stable no sudden deepening no sudden shallowing of the anterior chamber now the next part includes uh, the insertion of the IOL so here hydrophilic IOL is planned and there it goes a little bit unusual way uh, the leading haptic goes in but fairly okay and now the surgeon is trying to push those trailing haptics in the back while leading haptics appear to be in the back but now surgeon faces little bit of issue here you can see that the IOL appears little decentered and it's not rotating easily even if one rotates it again you can see it goes back to the same position and starts getting decentrate now why this decentration is happening that is uh, what the surgeon is now trying to investigate whether there is a dialysis or it's just that the haptics are little bit of folded appears ok but again you can see there is decentration the surgeon tries to inject little bit of diluted tramsulone thinking that is there a vitreous prolapse or is there a peripheral rent posterior capsule rupture which is causing the decentration but as you can see after tramsulone there is no vitreous which is visible there so that's kind of confusing so the surgeon ask uh, the expert surgeon there to come and have a look why this decentration is happening so again visco is in injected in the anterior chamber and then the surgeon tries to pull it back and now you can see that uh, the haptic appears torn so the leading haptic while insertion was being done it was torn so now surgeon decides that uh, this IOL has to get out because that's the reason for decentration so uses two sinkis just like chopsticks and pulls out one of the haptics out of the bag very carefully there and then the the second haptic again has to be taken out of the bag and now you can see here as the surgeon tries to take this out the torn haptic is actually you can see here that it's actually kind of stuck in the posterior capsule and as it was 
moved to the anterior chamber pulled you can see it kind of gets free from that posterior capsule so probably this torn haptic while uh, rotation was being done this torn haptic got stuck in the equator of the lens or the equator of the bag and that's what caused uh, decentration and it was not allowing the aisle to rotate so that happened while insertion you can see that leading haptic was unusually probably it got stuck somewhere while uh, in the cartridge and maybe it was torn when it was inserted so that was the flashback and uh, now the next step what the expert surgeon is going to do is uh, remove this IOL and then replace it with three piece IOL which makes sense because now there is probably a peripheral capsular rupture uh, because of the stuck uh, haptic there so I don't think now it's a good idea to try to place another aisle in the bag but rather place it in the sulcus ne now the aisle explantation is uh, not tough it's a hydrophilic aisle we have to use long vanas which are good enough so use long stout vanas keep one or two such scissors separately so they are sharp and you can cut the aisle in two half I have enlarged the incision little bit to 3 millimeters, so I can take these out very easily use uh, both hands that is one hand Macpherson another hand you can use limbs to hold this IOL and just pull it out through the incision one half is out then second half is also pulled out now there are different ways to explant foldable IOLs but uh, stick to one method and master it so you can use it all the time so this stout one as is one good uh, instrument to have there is another Packer Chang MST scissors which also I use and there are similar designs which are quite useful so now the three piece IOL goes in now in three piece IOL uh, always it is better to place the haptic in the anterior chamber rather than trying to go into sulcus directly and whenever you try to go into sulcus in such cases many times it goes into the bag like what happened here though I tried that uh, the haptic should uh, open up in the anterior chamber unfortunately it went into the sulcus initially but probably now it has gone into the bag and why I say so that's because the there is trouble in centering this aisle you can see that so when I tried visco wash the aisle was not centered at all so definitely there is a issue so one thing after the another so we have to be careful what we are dealing with now here again one probability was whether there was a dialysis and uh, that's what it was causing decentration but uh, I decided to re position the aisle so took out one haptic into the anterior chamber and then pushed it very carefully you can see I tried to push it into the sulcus and take your time if the pupil is small you can put iris hooks and there it goes uh, again it went into the bag you can see now I will try to pull it up and now place it in the sulcus now it is in the sulcus so with three piece aisle you have to be very careful after placement also you have to make sure that the haptics are properly in the sulcus if you have one haptic in the sulcus and another one in the bag that may lead to decentration and also tilt of the IOL and uh, the IOL may decenter so I think this is a great case to watch and learn a lot of things and thought process of course do comment do write suggestions what you would have done in such cases. Thank you.